I found a recording from a government quarantine site. They said it was Ebola, but it was something else. This recording serves as entry no. 3792 in the Operation Roundup archives. The following recording was retrieved from Redacted and features Redacted's account of Field Incident 72. Any unauthorized replication or release of any entries from these archives will result in espionage charges with a punishment up to and including execution. Hello, testing, testing. Damn, I hope this thing is working. My name is Name Redacted and I live at Location Redacted. If you find this message, please find my parents and tell them that no matter what the news says, I didn't die from Ebola. I woke up this morning at 6 a.m. It sounded like there was a construction crew at the building next door. The non-stop humming of power drills and the backup alarm of construction vehicles became overwhelming. Since I couldn't sleep, I grabbed breakfast and headed for a quick shower. Couldn't have been gone for more than 20 minutes. By the time I got back to my bedroom to put on some clothes, there was a weird shadow outside of my window. I walked closer to open the blinds to see what it was. My heart skipped a beat when I saw a man in a bucket lift wearing a military uniform and respirator. He was placing sheet metal over my window. We made eye contact but he didn't acknowledge me. What the hell are you doing, man? I screamed at him. Uncover my window, you freak show. The sound of a high-powered drill fastening the metal to the brick outside drowned me out. With my window covered, I was in the pitch dark, so I turned on my lamp and picked up my phone. I tried to call my building superintendent but the line was busy. Since I couldn't get a hold of him, I decided to head downstairs to his office to ask what the construction crew was doing. Superintendent Watkins usually posted notices if anyone would be working on the complex. So I had been worried that no one had notified him. After I put on some clothes, I walked to my front door. I could hear people talking loudly in the hallway. When I went outside, almost everyone on my floor was milling around in the hall and talking in worried tones. Did the board up your windows too? The old man from across the hall asked. I was eating breakfast when some damn fool started covering my windows with something. Acted like he didn't even see me. I told him the same thing had just happened in my apartment. There were other conversations of the same nature happening all around us. No one seemed to know why it was happening, so I zigzagged through the crowded hall and made my way down the staircase to go talk to the super. When I reached the landing to the lobby, the lights were so dim I couldn't see five feet in front of me. All of the picture windows were covered with what I assumed was the same metal that covered our apartment windows. Thin beams of sunshine penetrated the cracks and cast razor-thin lines of light on the tile floor. The only thing in the lobby I could see clearly was a dim light above the building entrance. The door looked like it had been replaced with one of those submarine doors. A bulkhead, I think. I was pulling my cell phone out of my pocket to use the flashlight app when a blinding circle of light filled my vision. My hands darted in front of my eyes to block it out, but it was still overwhelming. It startled me so much that I nearly fell over. Go back upstairs, sir, a voice called from the dark. This building is under quarantine due to an Ebola outbreak. Return to your home until the lockdown has ended. What the hell are you talking about? I asked, pulse racing. Ebola, you've got to be full of. Return to your home now, sir. Boom the voice. Failure to comply with this directive will result in the use of lethal force. You have five seconds to depart. Five, four, three. I ran back up the stairs in full panic. As I stumbled up the steps, I pulled my shirt over my mouth as a makeshift mask. The man downstairs said someone in the building was sick with Ebola and I knew there was a forest of people right upstairs. Before I rounded the top of the landing, I began to scream to the people upstairs. Go back to your apartments. I yelled. There is a man downstairs that said we are until quarantine lockdown. Someone here has Ebola. Get the hell away from each other. By the time I reached the second floor, people were already scattering back to their apartments like cockroaches. I waited at the top of the stairs until the hallways cleared and ran to my apartment. Once I was inside, I immediately jumped in the shower again. I know it was all in my head, but I felt like there were millions of things crawling on my skin and no water was hot enough to make me feel clean. After my second shower, I redressed and grabbed my cell phone before settling onto the couch. First, I tried to call a few people in the building that I knew, but the lines were all busy. Calls to my parents and sister ended with the same result. Eventually, I called emergency services and to my surprise, the line started ringing. Hello, 911, the operator said. What is your emergency? Yes, ma'am. I live at Redacted and some agency has sealed our building shut. When I went down, the line went dead. I tried to call back a few times but there was always a busy signal. After a few minutes, I decided to grab my laptop and try to reach someone online, but there was no internet signal. All I could do was cry. I curled up on the couch with my knees to my chest, afraid I had some fatal illness and would never see my friends or family again. My mind raced with potential methods of escape when suddenly I heard screams from down the hall. I walked quietly to my door and opened it. There was no one in the hallway. I could still hear a man screaming from down the hall. The sounds of crashing furniture and scraping on the walls drifted down to the open crack in my door. Then I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. A man in black military fatigues and a respirator held some kind of gun to his chest and held his hand to his ear. Control, this is Sergeant. The subject appears to be in apartment 101. Requesting permission to engage. Silence. Understood. Engaging now. The soldier tried to turn the knob but the door was locked. He leveled his rifle at the latch and fired two quick bursts before kicking the door inward. A guttural roar poured out from the room as the soldier began to fire. I knew I should have gone back inside but I couldn't look away. The man stood in the hallway raining bullets into the open apartment. Howls of pain and anger erupted. Something flew out of the door and hit the soldier in the face. It looked like an arm. The source of the blow made him stagger backward and he slid down the wall, still firing into the room. 
He tapped at his ear before ejecting the magazine from his rifle and slapping a new one into place. I could see him squeezing the trigger, but there was only a dry click. Come in, control, target engaged. I've emptied an entire magazine into the thing but nothing. A thin, scaled arm shot from the doorway and grabbed the soldier's ankle. The soldier pulled a knife from his belt and began slashing at the clawed hand. Another bellowing roar erupted as the knife failed to pierce through the shining skin. Another clawed hand grabbed his other ankle and dragged him into the apartment. I slammed my door and leaned against it as I hyperventilated. Even with the door shut, I could hear the man scream for help before a terrible ripping sound and terrifying silence. I started shoving every piece of furniture in the living room I could move against the door, even slid the dresser from my bedroom and added it to the pile. It wasn't a moment too soon. Just as I slumped onto the ground from the sudden exertion of energy, I could hear a scratching noise as something scampered in the hallway. Without warning, something began to throw its weight against my door. The furniture rattled and I braced myself against the barrier to add as much stability as I could. Growling mingled with the sound of claws digging into the wood of my door. Whatever it was, it wasn't making progress in the apartment. And then it fell quiet. No more scratching or grunting. It's been an hour since the thing tried to make its way into my apartment. I'm still sitting against the pile of furniture in case it comes back. My body weight probably won't be the difference in keeping it out, but why take the chance? I've heard it breaking down the doors of the other apartments on my floor. I can hear someone screaming right now. I want to help them, but there's nothing I can do. At least I'm safe here. Whatever that thing was, it couldn't get in. I wish my neighbors were as lucky. Anyway, if I don't make it out, shit, there is something moving through the heating ducts. I think, this recording was recovered by Recon Team Bravo. The entity from Field Incident 72 remains unaccounted for. More fatalities are expected. Containment of the aforementioned entity is listed as red level priority. End entry.